Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today for Friday Sews. Uh, it's been a little while so I've got quite a few bits and pieces to show you and to have a bit of a catch up on. Um, I've been knit doing some basic knit tops. I've got a jacket to show you that didn't quite turn out as planned but I think I managed to salvage. And I also thought that I would show you something I've made this week, which is the outfit that I'm going to wear on Christmas Day. I'm really, really pleased with it and um, yeah, can't wait to wear it. So yeah, look forward to showing you that as well. Um, in the meantime, I do just want to say thank you so much for all the fabulous um, and really flattering comments from my last video, my review of the traveller coat. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much because that was a lot of work to put into that coat. Um, I have really enjoyed wearing it. The weather has been diabolical um, and really cold so it's really come into its own. And I've even had uh, a couple of comments from complete strangers um, who've said, oh, really like your coat. And then you have that, that wonderful thing, haven't you, where you can say, oh, I made it myself. So. Lots to catch up on. I'm not doing Vlogmas this year, as you may have noticed, because <laughs> we're already quite a way into December. It's just too much work. I really uh, take my hat off to all my fellow sewing YouTubers who have been doing it. It's a lot. And I find that December's a busy time of year anyway. I've had all three kids have popped home for a quick visit from uni. Uh, none of them overlapping, but in a way that's quite nice too. Uh, so yeah, it, it's just too much going on to do Vlogmas. So um, yeah, sorry about that. The first thing I wanted to show you is the jacket that I made that, as I say, didn't quite go to plan. Um, it was one of those things, I'm sure I'm not the only person that does this. I bought the fabric. It was from Simply Fabrics. It's Indian block print. They had uh, quite a range. Now this was back sort of late summer. So I made it a little while ago um, and I kept looking at their website and kept looking at this range of fabrics and I knew none of them were really very me uh, but I couldn't resist. So in the end I ordered two fabrics and the fabric came and I thought I'll be inspired and I really couldn't think of anything um, to make. So I decided that what I would do is I would choose one of those patterns that great, is great at showcasing a, a really nice fabric. You know, when you want something that's quite uh, clean and plain and simple. So I chose the Plivy coat, which is from this uh, book, which is Lotta Jan's daughter. I don't know about my Swedish pronunciation, um, I was walking my dog this morning with my friend who's Swedish, I should have asked her. Um, anyway, this book is fabulous. Like lots of people that sew, I've got loads of sewing books and a lot of them, you know, haven't really been looked at since the day I bought them, or they were given to me. And a lot of them I haven't used the patterns. Um, I have used the couple from the Merchant and Mills book, that's quite a good one. Um, but yes, lots haven't really been used, but this one I think is a really nice one. Having said that, I've probably had it a year or so. Um, yeah, might be quite a nice Christmas present. I'll link it below. The reason I like it is, like a lot of these books, it's one of these where it tries to give you an entire wardrobe that's kind of trans-seasonal. Um, but her designs are nice and simple, as the usual. There's a trousers, shorts, a tunic, a dress, a good couple of bags, um, and this plivy coat. But it's a nice book to read. The photography is really nice, but it has, yeah, it just reads really nicely. It's nice visually, but there are a lot of other crafty things in there. There's kind of stuff about making fabric bracelets and jewellery and other sort of, yeah, crafty bits and pieces. So I would really recommend this one as a bit of a treat to yourself or yeah, somebody else. And it's one of those, you know, where the um, patterns are in the back, you have to trace off and it's not too bad. I think at times there might be two pattern pieces that overlap, but it's not the kind of spaghetti junction you get with um, Birda. So yeah, I really like this book. Anyway, the Plivy is nice and simple because it just has a round neck. It's not supposed to be lined. It's not anything like as technical as the coat I made last time. It has raglan sleeves. I don't think there's even a dart. 
yeah, super, super simple and basic. So my plan was that I would give quilting a go, and I've never quilted, uh, apart from hand quilting a bed cover, I never really, I, I'm no quilter, and I thought I'd make it reversible. And I gave it a go, and as I say, it didn't quite work out. So let me show you what I ended up with, because this isn't uh, really, yeah, I had to adapt. So this is the outer fabric, and this is the size I kind of prefer, really. I mean, you know me in greens. Um, and then the inside is this one, which is like a daffodils, and you may know I have an affinity towards daffodils. So my plan was to make it completely reversible, and I really didn't want to end up with bound edges, with bias binding on the edges at all. So I didn't have the good sense to look at any blogs or any information online. And in the end, the only way I could work out how to do that, because I thought I couldn't do the usual quilt sandwich because I didn't want to have binding around the edges. So in the end, what I did was I quilted the outer layer and I just used um, interlining. So it's not super, super thick and super squishy, but it just gives it a little bit of extra something. Um, and I thought, well, I'll quilt the outer lining and then the uh, outer fabric, and then the inner is loose, as it were. And then if I wanted to, I thought, well, I could always do a little bit of hand quilting sporadically throughout. But in fact, once I'd finished it, I realized that the inside fabric is just not me and I thought I am not going to wear it um, it just it's just not my style so what I decided to do was um, to go full hog and I thought right let's make it a little bit glam a little bit more glitzy because if I am going to be mostly wearing it at home um, then for times like now uh, at Christmas, I can be, you know, swishing around my home in something that feels nice and easy going and kind of, yeah, comforting and pyjama-like, uh, but with a bit of gold and a bit of glitz. So I ended up going to Longside Market where there are lots of stalls that sell lots of trims and I bought this gold and green braiding uh, or trimming and I ended up putting that down the centre front and around the edges. I didn't put it around the neck. Um, I managed to bag out the neckline because I thought that could be a bit itchy. So now, I will move this now. Uh, I don't know if I'd said that if you've watched any of my videos when I used to be in this spot all the time, that coffee is not going to move. Don't be distracted by it. I promise you. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's nice to have something that's an alternative, as I said, to a cardigan. And um, I'm pleased to have given quilting a bit of a go. I... It's very time consuming, isn't it? Um, but I did a few tests with marking. I did kind of eight centimetre squares. Um, I tested uh, marking tools, which was quite good fun. I. I'm a big fan of those friction pens, you know, that iron out. But with this, I did have the good sense to see um, whether when it was cold, whether those lines would come back, the markings would come back. So I did a little test, ironed it, the marking disappeared, but then I put it in the freezer. And sure enough, the uh, all the lines came back. So I ended up using chalk. So that was good to do and good to know. So yeah, really pleased with this one. I have to say I'm a little bit hot, so I'm going to take it off. And then as I said at the end of my last video, my intention was in the last 10 days was to sew lots of kind of basic tops, things that you can wear at this time of year. I guess the main theme was that I wanted things that felt nice and soft and cozy, which can be a little bit of a problem fabric wise, can't it? Because these days I end up buying so much of my fabric online um, and therefore you can't feel it. And not all um, fabric companies will necessarily say if something is soft and um, it's mostly looking at knit fabrics. And there can be really nice soft cotton jerseys and some that 
don't feel so soft and I yeah, wanted soft and cosy so I definitely had a little look out when I went to the knitting and stitching show in Harrogate uh, a few weeks ago and I bought this fabric from um, Higgs and Higgs which is a fleece back sweatshirting and I made this which is a Megan Nielsen Jarrah um, but I did just and this is a pattern I have all of these are just patterns I already had in my stash because I kind of feel like for a basic knit top to be honest once you've got one you've pretty much got them all um, some of the companies will do different neckline variations which is really helpful so I had a little play with necklines um, but yeah there's certainly no need to go buying lots of different ones I I don't think so this is a Meg Nielsen Jarrah which is one I already had but I did make the sleeves a bit wider and then gathered them in um, to the cuff. I just fancied having a little play, to be honest. And this is slightly oversized. I think I sized up um, and I just wanted something like that, you know, just for mooching around at home. We don't have a um, particularly large family. Um, both Dave and I have brothers that live abroad. So at Christmas time, we do a lot of, we're at home a lot. We don't go out visiting lots of people. Um, we're here with my mother-in-law and the kids. And because they've all been at uni, we're really looking forward to all spending time together. And we'll do lots of playing games and reading. And lots of us have uh, crafty type, arty type hobby, hob hobbies. hobbies. Um, so we will be doing a lot of just milling around at home. And I wanted to feel... Um, comfortable and then what I wanted to do as I say was try out some other necklines and the pattern emporium patterns are great for that so I had this is one I hadn't made before um, but had bought a little while ago and it's called the game on top and it's a one shouldered top and I made it out of this fabric which I bought for not very much money in long sight market uh, when I was there with Gemma Hammy dressmaker and Marie from, I think she's called Marie Made This, and we all bought some because it was really cheap and we just, I think we just all thought, oh, you know, great, it's a sort of fairly medium weight um, knit t-shirty type material, it would be fab. Um, so I thought, well, look, it didn't cost very much, I'll give it a go. And I made it, there are two different bodice types with this pattern, and one is a, not fitted, but a semi-fitted, and then one flares out and I meant to make the one that flared out but obviously wasn't paying attention and I made the semi-fitted one by mistake. Um, so I made it to see what it was like and I tried it on and I actually really like it. In fact why don't I put it on you can see what you think. So yeah I like it. I thought you know for exactly that sort of thing. Now I've just tucked my bra strap under here um, but because I'm most of the time I'm wearing it yeah, kind of pyjama-like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not always wearing it with a bra on underneath. Um, but yeah, I kind of liked it for that just sort of mooching around of an evening, just to have a different kind of neckline for once. Uh, but what I found was that this material is horrible to wear. Um, so definitely a case of cheap false economy. False economy is the word I'm looking for. Um, yeah, certainly don't want to sleep in it. And in my, our bedroom is really cold at night. So you definitely need to hand for your arms covered, you know, the bits of you that are out of the duvet. Yeah, a bit annoyed with myself, but I liked the shape. So I decided to make another one in a fabric that would be more breathable. So I made a black one out of some black interlock that I had already in my stash from Fabworks. So I made that. I've already got one of those Kylie and the Machine labels from this year's advent calendar. Um, so I made the, it out of black interlock from Fabworks and I realised that this interlock fabric is absolutely perfect for this time of year because it's 100% cotton, it's really really nice and soft which is definitely as I say a priority for right now um, and it's breathable because it's cotton. And at Fabworks, this is something, they've got it in quite a few different colours. I think it's actually described as soft or extra soft interlock. It's something like £8 a metre. So I made a black one 
um, and I've really enjoyed wearing that. And then I got a bit carried away and decided that while I was making tops like this, I would also try another pattern, Emporium pattern, which I had, which is the Keep It Simple Tea, which has the square neckline. And I think I said at the last video, I've made it before um, in the summer in a yellow. And I thought that might be quite nice as well. But when I came, I got halfway through cutting it out and I ran out of the fabric. So I thought, oh, that's really annoying because I'm really enjoying using this interlock. Um, so I had a little look online and uh, I could have ordered some more from Fabworks, but as you do, I had a little look to see where else might do it. And I found some from a website called Tia Knight Fabrics and it was 2 a meter as opposed to eight pounds a meter. So I thought, well, for the sake of this kind of thing that I'm wearing at night time, I'm not particularly expecting it to be amazing uh, as long as it's breathable. I'll order it. So I ordered four meters and it arrived. And to be honest, the back of this top is the one is the fabric from Tia Knight and the sleeves in the front is from Fabworks. I see no difference. It appears to me to be exactly the same fabric and I'm really, really enjoying it for this kind of, um, yeah, it feels nice. It doesn't feel thin. It feels nice and soft. And this time of year, I think this is the perfect t-shirt material. But let me show you this. So this time I went for this, there are two variations with this neckline. There's a high square neck and a low square neck. And this time I went for the low square neck and I'm not convinced. So I'll put it on and you can see why. Okay, so it's fine. Um, it's definitely one that your bra straps need to be pushed, you know, right towards to the edge. And if I wanted to wear it, um, you know, out and about, you need to kind of be aware of that. It's a bit more booby than I would normally do, but I can live with that. <laughs> Uh, but my problem is that the minute I, so this is a size 14, which is what all my Pattern Emporium tops have been in. They all fit me beautifully as a size 14, so I know that that's fine. But for me, this is just too wide open because the minute I kind of do that, it's bagging um, out. And I don't really want to lean down and show you my cleavage. Um, but you know what I mean, it's like the minute I kind of reach over for something, it's fine because I'm at home, but I just wouldn't wear this out and about, I don't think. I think it's just too inclined to want to kind of open up. And I've I've definitely had issues with tops that are very open at the front. Um, for me, I think I've been, at one point I came up with the term pigeon chested when I looked at <laughs> fitting issues. Um, so I think it's you know possibly a me thing but I just felt that this is yeah pajamas and for milling around at home it's fine but I just don't think I would make this again for general wear or I'd size down if I particularly wanted to do that low neckline again and then I thought I would show you the outfit that I made this week for me to wear on Christmas day and as I say, we don't have a huge family. There'll just be six of us here, uh, five kids and mother-in-law. Unfortunately, my father-in-law's not with us anymore and my parents are over in Germany. Uh, it's a lot harder for them to come and visit. So it's just a small number of us. The kids are obviously adults, young adults now. So it's not quite like it used to be. We're very relaxed, but we do like to make a bit of an effort. Um, so I've made this definitely with that in mind so i'll go and get changed and show you what i made <laughs> yep no glamorous dress for me i made pajamas <laughs> um i couldn't resist really i just want to be comfy and cozy on christmas day um yeah i mean i'm all for people who like to get dressed up and have a nice sort of posh frock um, and I've done that plenty of times in the past. But it's a lot of work to do on Christmas morning, isn't it? With all that turkey business. Um, and I'm vegetarian and I'm still going to be cooking a turkey. Anyway, I just couldn't resist. I really wanted to make some Christmas PJs. I saw this fabric on the Lamalzi website. It's called Galaxy. 
Um, they actually have it in quite a few different colourways. Uh, and I took a bit of a risk because I definitely wanted it to feel nice and soft. Uh, but it does, it really does. It's really nice. Actually, to be honest, <laughs> when the fabric arrived, I had second thoughts about making pajamas from it because it was so nice. I just thought, um, yeah, it's, is it too nice for pajamas? Should I make a dress or something? But I'm glad I didn't because I just thought, oh, you know, what's wrong with having sort of, yeah, nice pair of PJs that feel a little bit special, even if it is just to me. <laughs> um, and I just did this orange cuffing on the, um, yeah, on the cuffs and on the cuff of the trousers so I mean I again I just used patterns I already had so this again is that same pattern emporium pattern uh, the keep it simple tee but with the higher square neck so not as booby and as kind of yeah bagging out around the front so it's just slightly higher and I like that I really do like that and then the bottom half, I'll insert some pictures, the bottom half is a pair of True Bias Hudson um, pants and I used a bit of velvet ribbon for the ties, which to be honest I probably should have pressed, um, just to, again to make it feel a little bit festive. And they are so nice to wear. I am definitely not going to wait to Christmas Day. These are going to be in circulation from today. In fact, I will be editing this video wearing these very pyjamas. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess that's been a bit of a theme this week, is making things that feel kind of wintry and cosy and lots of knits. And why not? I think I tend to sort of dismiss that part of my wardrobe and think, you know, just wear any old thing. It doesn't really matter. Of course it doesn't really matter. But as I've probably said before, I definitely find that my mood is affected by what I wear. And if I just feel like I've made a bit of effort, um, it makes me feel better. Not bothered about how it makes anyone else feel, it just makes me feel better. Um, it's funny, I was talking to my daughter the other day and she was saying she finds it with makeup. If she at least puts some lipstick on, make, puts, you know, a bit of makeup on, she feels better and ready to take on the day. So, yeah, for me it's clothes. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to make a bit of an effort to make more pyjamas and more knitty type things um, and not necessarily always, you know, bits and pieces that are falling apart and probably ought to be turned into dusters and rags. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I've been up to this week. The next thing I'm going to be doing is making that dress that I mentioned the other week from Famer Patterns. I have done the whole process of the measuring and I have got my patterns here back from, or my pattern, back from Fabuloso, arrived in the last day or two. So I will be getting on with that next. I think I'll do a toile rather than going straight into the fabric. Um, so I'm going to do a toile of that next and I will be back soon to let you know how that all went because that's the pattern company I was talking about where the patterns are made to measure. Talked about it on my last video. Um, so I'm interested to see how that goes. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> thank you for subscribing and I will see you soon.